Good day everyone! So today's lesson is about the genetics of diet-induced polyphenism. Now what is polyphenism? It is a discrete alternative phenotypes that arise not from an organism's genetic information but from environmental cues that are received during development. So therefore, polyphenism is when there is a development of multiple or there are many um, phenotypes that arise only in a single genotype and that is due to differences in their environmental conditions. There are different types of polyphenism but Today's discussion is we will discuss about diet-induced polyphenism. Now, from the word um, diet, so it refers to how diet affects the genome and how this leads to changes in form or the phenotype of an organism. Now, we will use the cast development in honeybees as an example for diet-induced polyphenism. Now, honeybees have two female casts, so we have here the workers and the queens. And as you can observe, they differ in their um, physiology and of course in their behavior. So not because of their different genetics, but as a consequence on their larval diet. Now the queen bees here have 32 number of chromosomes, while the male honeybees have 16 number of chromosomes. And when um, they mate, the queen bee store the sperm in her spermatica. And it is located in her abdomen and the queen bee decides whether or not to introduce the sperm to her egg so for for instance if there is no sperm that is introduced to her egg then it will only develop into and fertilized egg that is only haploid because it has only 32 number of chromosomes and if um, the queen bee decide uh, if the queen bee um, introduce the sperm to the egg then it will have um, it will develop into fertilized egg it is diploid having 32 number of chromosomes and these 32 number of chromosomes that is female honeybees can either become um, a worker or a queen now the development of a worker or a queen honeybees is um, is because on the food that they um, on because of what they what the worker be fed during their larval development so for instance if our, the royal jelly is fed to the larva then it will have a faster development for 13 days and it will develop into queen bees and if worker jelly is fed on the larvae then it will develop into worker honeybees now as you can observe between the queen bees and the worker they have different characteristics so for the queen it has jug mandibles and it has a longer lifespan so it has longer abdomen because it has spermatica as what i had mentioned earlier and it is where the queen store the sperm and it has active ovaries because the queen bee can only reproduce while the worker bee have a short lifespan for only three to six weeks and it has an active ovaries now what is the chemistry behind this so dna methylation is the reversible addition of a methyl group to a cytosine residue in the dna and it is one way in which larvae respond to differences in their nutrition now here, it, this is the cytosine, and this methyl transferase is an enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of a methyl group from a methyl donor to a cytosine. So for example, if this is the methyl group um, with one carbon and three hydrogen, and if it is added to the cytosine, then it will become 5-methyl cytosine. Now, what is the importance of DNA methylation to royal jelly and the development of female queen bees. Now, recent research has shown that the ingredients in the royal jelly are capable of inhibiting an enzyme called cytosine methyltransferase. So the royal jelly therefore inhibits the methyltransferase that methylates the cytosine bases in honeybee. DNA. So if a bee is unable to make DNA methylation, so if there is no DNA methylation because the methyl transferase is being inhibited by the royal jelly during larval development, then it will develop a queen bee. So DNA methylation is thus required to make workers. So silencing the expression of DNA methyl transferase in newly hatched larvae 
and embryos strongly biases an individual's outcome toward the queen fate. So, um, this demonstration is linked between nutrition, differential DNA methylation, gene expression, and phenotype in a way that has not been achieved in other animals and raises the possibility that DNA methylation may underpin diet-induced changes in phenotype. So, that's all about the genetics of diet-induced polyphenism and how DNA methylation and involves in the development of the female or the female queen bees and the worker honeybees and the importance of it in the development of those um, organism now that's all for today and i hope that you'd um, you have learned a lot about this